Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at how to easily make a cast resin seashell themed Chinese checkers board. Now this is the finished product. You've got some nautical netting, a variety of seashells, shark teeth, starfish. It started out, I, I purchased an 18 inch mold off of uh, Etsy. I then went down to a local arts and uh, craft supply, uh, Michael's, and I purchased uh, some of this decorative uh, netting fishnet as well as the seashells and starfish. I laid them all uh, into the mold and I tried to keep everything as flat as possible. I uh, figured that, would, that way I would use less resin to cover it. I'm using Total Boat's Thick Set Resin. This is a three to one resin, uh, three parts resin, one part hardener. Very easy to mix. You can just use the um, the measuring guidelines on the inside of these quart containers. You mix this resin very slowly for at least five minutes so that it gets completely, uh, the, you know, the resin and the hardener get completely mixed together. Now what I did is I used two quarts of this just to kind of coat all of the shells um, and the netting. And then I, I'm gonna let that harden overnight um, even though this resin is very thin and takes a long time to cure, which usually gives the, any bubbles in the mixture plenty of time to reach the surface and, and dissipate before, before the stuff hardens, uh, with all of these shells, uh, they're, they're all kind of have the tendency of holding on to bubbles. I wanted to give them a good coating, um, let this first coat harden so that any bubbles that were stuck uh, to a shell uh, wouldn't have the chance of getting into the clear coat above. And then see, it seemed to work out pretty well. So I let this harden overnight, and then I just started to fill the mold. I probably should have used uh, a volume uh, calculator. I know that uh, Total Boat does have one on their website. Um, I didn't, I just eyeballed it. Um, and it took a little bit more resin uh, than I anticipated. Uh, in total, I probably have um, seven quarts of resin. If you look at that, that white shell up top, you can still, still see it's not covered. You know, when you add a whole another quart, it doesn't seem to add all that much. Um, probably only adds an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch at the most in depth. It's a pretty substantial mold. And then finally, I've got all of the shells covered. Now you can see at first, you will see some bubbles, uh, especially right where you're pouring. Those will all have plenty of time to reach the surface and they'll dissipate. You could also just move them all and, and pop them all with a pin. I used a hairdryer um, and I just, I just went over the surface a few times and I blew uh, all of the bubbles until they popped. The other alternative is to use a little but uh, butane lighter that will also pop the bubbles. Um, I let the resin sit in the mold uh, for about five days and get completely hard uh, before I, I just tapped it out of the mold. And I gotta say, I was pretty pleased with the way it looked at this point. There was a little edge on the side. It's actually a sharp edge. So at first I was gonna sand that all off and polish, but then I thought, you know what? It would be a good idea to leave that edge there. I'll just dull it a little bit. This way, if a marble comes loose, it doesn't fall off of the board. So I just used an oscillating sander, uh, 400 grit, and I went around the whole uh, outside diameter and just smoothed over that lip, but I didn't get rid of it completely. And I also sanded uh, you know, any little imperfections that I saw. Then I went to a thousand, and then I, I went to a two thousand grit. This resin is actually pretty easy to polish, uh, as long as you get to at least a two thousand grit, get all the scratches gone to two thousand. Then it polishes up, you know, real easily. I just used a, a buffer I have in my shop with a little compound. But they make buffing wheels, you could 
you know, horizontal buffing wheel, you can put on a drill. It's a, a bunch of different options. Uh, then it was time, you know, time to drill the holes uh, for the Chinese checkers board. Now, I took a pattern, which I downloaded off the, off the internet, just search for Chinese checkerboard pattern. Um, I sized it on the computer to the size that I wanted. It took me two sheets of paper, and I just taped those together. And then I just used scotch tape and taped them down, you know, where I wanted it on the board. I'm using a router uh, with a quarter inch radius uh, round bit. And I, I gotta say, there's, there's a lot of holes in this thing. It wasn't hard, uh, but it was absolutely a little tedious. Really didn't take, you know, all that long. I had done one other Chinese checkers board in the past. I used uh, the same bit in a drill press. It works a lot better on the router. It, it was turning faster than my drill press turns. And it just, you know, generated cleaner holes. So this is the finished product. Um, I actually purchased um, marbles also off of Etsy. I try to keep them in the nautical theme, greens and blues. Crystal clear casting, courtesy of uh, Total Boat's thick set resin. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and consider uh, subscribing to this YouTube channel. I would absolutely love it if you left, if you took a minute and left me a comment in the comment section. Um, I'd like to give you an invite to check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Thank you very much for watching.